up you guys welcome back to another one if you are new to the channel i am gold pony i do new car truck suv reviews on youtube and today for the first time ever i am in the new 2021 honda odyssey courtesy of apple honda in york pa for more information on their inventory please feel free to check out the link in the description box below believe it or not you guys although i've been reviewing vehicles for five or six years this is actually the first time i am in a honda odyssey which is quite exciting for me and taking that a step further i've actually never reviewed a minivan before so having said that what do you guys say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always let's start with pricing and so as you can imagine there are several different trim levels for the 2021 odyssey first one being the lx starting at $31,790 ex for $35,190 exl for $38,460 touring for $42,500 and lastly the one we have today being the elite trim level this one's starting at $47,820 but it will say regardless of trim level that you go with power plant on the new odyssey will be the same powering this minivan will be a 3.5 liter naturally aspirated v6 putting out 280 horsepower at 6,000 rpm 262 pound feet of torque available at 4700 rpm power sent to the front wheels through a 10 speed automatic with paddle shifters believe it or not and we of course will be testing those out in a little bit here but zero to 60 time an impressive 6.6 .6 seconds this is a minivan that's why i'd say impressive so we'll be testing that out as well and mpg numbers coming in at 19 in the city 20 on the highway taking regular unleaded fuel saving you a little bit of money there as opposed to the premium i suppose but so before we do that paddle shifter test i did want to mention there are a couple different driving modes there is snow mode and of course you have honda's popular econ button so but what snow mode does is it actually recalibrates the traction control setting so providing you a little extra traction when it does start snowing and as far as what that econ button does when i've had my past several civics that essentially limits shift points it decreases throttle resistance response and actually the climate control settings as well so ultimately that's there to help you get a little bit extra miles per gallon it's especially useful when you're doing a lot of boring highway driving for example but anyways having now mentioned all of that i do not have it in that econ button because i do want to do a paddle shifter test here first and to do that, what I'm going to do is simply press the drive button one more time, and that is gonna give me more of a sport driving mode actually, so it did immediately downshift, holding the RPMs at a much higher level there. And so having said that, let's do a quick little paddle shifter test now, and let's see how quickly these paddle shifters are actually going to react for us here in the new Honda Odyssey. And let's just do it here, pulling out on the main road here, and here we go. Huh. Not the very quickest I've ever tested, but really kind of impressive for a minivan. I kind of didn't expect that. That was legit. That was okay for a minivan. Certainly no issues there. Really what you're gonna use it for a minivan anyways is engine braking when it does actually snow out and you have it in that snow driving mode. Rather than braking going down a hill, you're gonna downshift using the paddle shifter so you're less likely to slide off the road. So ultimately that is what they're gonna be there for. So to take it out of that sport driving mode, I'm just gonna hit the D button one more time here below the infotainment screen. And that is gonna give the Odyssey back full control. And having said that, let's do a quick little acceleration test here. All right, you guys in three, two one go okay wow <laughs> how do you always impress me <laughs> whenever it comes to zero to 60 times i feel like hondas the vehicles that you don't think are going to be fast or at least relatively quick whatsoever are that's kind of impressive it's like the honda pilot it's quicker than you think the honda odyssey is definitely on that same boat it kind of surprises you when you hit the gas certainly no issues emerging onto the highway i guess is what i'm getting at there but wow kind of impressive there for the odyssey i like it but so anyways to go along with that acceleration as always braking is equally important and so up front you will find 12.6 inch ventilated front discs in the back 13 inch solid rear disc as far as that 60 to zero stopping distance goes comes in at 124 feet as i am pulling up to a stop sign right now and for comparison's sake in case you were interested toyota sienna comes in at 128 feet so a little bit better stopping time in the honda odyssey and also for even more comparison volkswagen atlas their largest three-row suv comes in at 139 feet so really 124 feet is quite impressive for a 60 to zero stopping distance so that 
is definitely nice there. As far as the braking feel goes, as you can imagine, there's no issues with that whatsoever. There's no brake pedal delay or anything like that. Then touching on suspension and handling, up front you're going to get a McPherson strut front suspension. In the back, compact multi-link rear suspension with trailing arms, front and rear stabilizer bars. And as far as the ride quality goes, it's not going to be a Mercedes-Benz luxury-like or BMW luxury-like ride, but it's not bad to be quite honest. I've certainly hit plenty of road imperfections on my short test drive here in Pennsylvania and it's soaking those road imperfections up pretty much as expected. So certainly not bad, but again, not luxury like either. As far as the steering feel goes, I will say it's definitely on the looser side, but that's pretty much as expected for a minivan, I would imagine. What essentially that means is you're not gonna have as much steering feedback as a sports car, but it's definitely on the looser side. I wouldn't mind it maybe a little bit heavier of a weight to the steering feel, but ultimately, it's as expected there as far as cabin noise goes that is actually very impressive i will say that honda odyssey got it right when it comes to cabin noise or lack thereof i should say acoustic front windshield coming with the exl trim level and up acoustic windshield and front and rear doors coming with the elite and touring trim levels that is wonderful a lot of times even on luxury vehicles like bmw and mercedes-benz you'll see those acoustic front windows but you won't see the acoustic rear windows which the odyssey has on the elite and touring trim level so that kind of surprised me and that's very impressive actually for this not being a luxury vehicle. Then touching on visibility, it's actually a lot better than I expected. Not only can those third row headrests be pushed down into the seat, so they're not hindering any sort of visibility, but there is a massive rear window back there. I would say this is better than 95% of the three row SUVs actually that I test out. So visibility is really quite impressive for this Honda Odyssey minivan, I will say that. In addition to that visibility, rain sensing windshield wipers do come on the elite trim level that we have here today. And it is calling for severe thunderstorms today, so I'm sure we will be testing those out in a little bit here, but that's always a good thing. It's automatic windshield wipers, basically. You never have to worry about that, so that's a good thing as well. But that about rounds out the performance segment of this review guys let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of this brand new 2021 honda odyssey all right here she is you guys the refreshed 2021 honda odyssey finished in obsidian blue pearl for anybody who is curious there like i said there is a refreshed look especially up front for the 2021 model year up front you will find a gloss black active shutter front grille active shutter meaning that front grille will open and close dependent upon the engine cooling that is needed at any given time so that's pretty nice bmw actually does that too and several other companies but bmw just comes to mind but to the sides led headlights do come standard on the honda odyssey even on the lx trim level love that and of course they come with the automatic feature meaning when it starts to get dark out at night they will turn on automatically for you there just below that if you go with the ex trim level and up you will also to find LED front fog lights as well. So now let's go ahead and make our way to the side of this one here. And so to the side, chrome belt line molding does come standard across the board along with rear privacy glass as well. Black door handles are gonna come on the LX trim level. Chrome door handles are gonna come with the EX trim level and up black side skirts with the LX, EX, and EXL. Body colored side skirts, however, like you're looking at now with the touring and elite trim levels. Then when it comes to the side mirrors, they are power adjustable black side mirrors for the LX body colored side mirrors for the EX trim level and up and they will of course come heated with integrated turn signals if you go with the EX trim level and up as well. EXL is going to add memory settings to those side mirrors and also a reverse gear tilt down function meaning when you put the Odyssey in reverse those side mirrors will tilt down a little bit so you're less likely to run over a bicycle or whatever whatever you don't want to run over really. But then take a look down at the wheel setup 18 inch alloys coming with the LX, EX and EX excel trims 19 inch alloy wheels coming with the touring and elite and of course that is what you were looking at right now do like the silver in the black or gunmetal contrast we have on these wheels too it's a nice look to it i will say that but also towards the back last thing i wanted to mention on the side is you do have that floating roof line as well so it actually looks pretty good on this one but let's go ahead now and make our way to the back of the odyssey shark fin antenna up top you guys can see that just below that rear spoiler with an integrated brake light just below that rear window wiper of course that chrome belt line molding actually continues all the way around to the back 
as well. It's an interesting look. Don't hate it, but it's definitely unique. It's a little bit different than what I'm used to seeing. LED taillights also come standard across the board along with that rear window wiper. Trim level badging down below. You guys can see the Elite badging down there. And just below all of it, you will find a hidden single exhaust outlet. This is always one of the things I would sometimes change in vehicles. I like the exposed exhaust outlet, but nonetheless, I do believe you guys know what we have to do next. As always here, is that exhaust clip. Alright, so now since we are around back of the Honda Odyssey, there are a few different ways you can go about opening that rear lift gate. It is a power lift gate for the EXL trim level and up, meaning manual lift gate for the LX and EX. You actually get a hands-free lift gate if you go with the trim that we have today, being the Elite, in case your hands are full, that's always convenient as well. But once opened up, the cargo capacity on this is seriously impressive. 32.8 cubic feet behind that third row for comparison's sake, 21 cubic feet for the Kia Telluride. And so that had me questioning, how in the world did they get that much space behind that third row? Where is this spare tire? Let me show you guys. Spare tire is actually hidden within the floor where the second row passenger sit underneath that floor level. That is pretty cool. They put it there. That is more efficient than taking it away from the cargo capacity in the back. I actually love that idea. So that's how they were able to get so much cubic feetness. I know that's not a word behind that third row. Pretty impressive there. If you fold down that third row, it was pretty easy to fold that down. Behind the second row comes in at 88.8 .8 cubic feet. Again, very impressive amount there. And with all rows folded, seriously, you could live possibly in the Honda Odyssey. 144.9 cubic feet. For comparison's sake, the 2020 Chevy Suburban came in at 121.7 cubic feet, meaning their large three-row SUV came in at less cubic feet than the Honda Odyssey. I love that. It's so much space here in the Honda Odyssey. It's very impressive. It surprised me actually once again. Also though, in that cargo area, perhaps my favorite feature, something that you never see, for the Elite trim level only, you do have a Honda vacuum system in that cargo area, meaning on the side of the cargo area in the back there, you actually have a shop vac back there in case little Timmy decides to get a little bit dirty back there or he decided to throw dirty clothes back there, eventually is inevitably going to get dirty with this being a minivan. So therefore, Honda thought it might be kind of convenient to have a vacuum back there. Another freaking cool feature. I absolutely love that idea. So anyways, had to elaborate on that a little bit. 12 volt power outlet also in the cargo area. There's cargo lighting, there's grocery hooks as well. That's always convenient, but really that vacuum system is so freaking cool. I love that that's back there. But now let's go ahead and make our way to the third row legroom where the impressiveness continues quite honestly. 38 0.1 inches of rear legroom. That is more than most sedans in the back seat. For reference, I mean even six feet tall. This is how much space I have back there. Also, quite easy to get into that third row as well. And so there is magic sliding second row seats, meaning you can actually remove this center seat in the second row if you wanted to, and then slide the second row seat to the middle, allowing passengers to simply just run into the back there, or you can remove this middle seat and then you could just walk up the center aisle there. Either way is perfectly fine, but I love how the second row seats do slide to create a little extra space there as well to get into the third row. So also there is one USB charging port in that third row if you were to go with the touring or elite trim levels only and there's also some rear ventilation back there as expected to make sure everybody is comfortable at all times but let's now go ahead and make our way to the second row legroom coming in at 40.9 inches for reference I'm mean even six feet tall plenty of space for me and by the way when it comes to seating there is seating for seven if you go with the LX trim level however all other trims will give you seating for eight meaning three passengers in the third row three passengers in the second row and two of course in the front but go with that LX trim level you're only going to get two seats in the second row I didn't want to mention that but another thing that really impressed me rear window sunshades it's always something I look for in family SUVs and minivans of course any kind of family vehicle really rear window sunshades come with the EX trim level and up so really it's on one of the lower trim levels I love that and that's for the second row and here's something that really surprised me third row rear window sunshades. I've never seen that before in 
any three row SUV that I've ever tested. And I feel like I've tested just about all of them at this point. That third row actually does get rear window sunshades if you were to go with the Touring and Elite trim levels. Again, surprised me, very impressive, I love that. Second row USB charging ports also come standard on the EXL trim level and up. And another cool feature I found on this one, 10.2 inch entertainment slash Blu-ray player for the touring and elite trim levels. And that does come with headphones, of course, even for the third row, they can plug in the headphones too, if they wanted to. But you can really play anything up there, of course, Blu-rays, but you can also connect to various apps as well. So love that that's there, although everybody has tablets these days anyways, but still really cool feature that that's there. Now make your way to the front seats on the Odyssey eight-way power driver's seat for the base trim level being the LX. And that comes with a four-way power adjustable passenger seat as well. So even with the LX, you get power adjustable front seats. It's pretty cool. 12-way power driver's seat for the EX trim level and up, and that comes with four-way power lumbar. EXL adds to that memory settings for the front seats. Heated front seats for the EX trim level and up. Ventilated front seats for the Elite trim level we have today. Cloth seating is going to come with the LX and EX, and leather seating is going to come with the EXL trim level and up. Overall, seats are plenty comfy for me. Absolutely no issues whatsoever when it comes to the seat comfort, which is very important in a road trip vehicle like the Odyssey. So seat comfort is definitely on point in this one. Then take a look at the steering wheel. It is tilt and telescoping. It is leather wrapped for the EXL trim level and up. And there is also a heated steering wheel button I am looking at here on our elite trim level as well in case you wanted that. But now making our way to the startup, let me first start by showing you guys the key here. You do have your Honda logo on the one side and when you flip it over, lock, unlock that button to pop the rear hatch. There is also a remote start. By the way, that remote start comes with the EXL trim level and up. Push button start comes standard on all trim levels. And of course, there's two center buttons that is going to be for opening those rear doors in case anybody was curious there. But let's just go ahead and start this one up. I'm just simply going to put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button, which is located just by the driver's right knee there. And so, but then once started up, engine temp is all the way to your left, fuel information all the way to your right, and there is a relatively large digital gauge cluster front and center, which can be controlled by using the steering wheel mounted controls on the left side, providing a relatively large digital speedometer. Of course, it's also gonna tell you if you're on that econ mode, it's gonna give you your RPMs at the very top. Navigation, Bluetooth information, radio information, when you need your next oil change, the list goes on. There's really a ton of stuff you could check out out there, outside temperature as well. But now making our way to overall interior quality, again, tons of features you wouldn't think about. Power moonroof coming with the EXL trim level and up. I like that. Home link controls for the EXL trim level and up as well. That's for up to three different garage doors. This is located just underneath of that rear view mirror there. It's pretty cool. Auto dimming rear view mirror coming with the EXL trim level and up as well. Blue ambient lighting for the touring trim level and up. Wouldn't have minded if they had a multicolor system there, but still blue ambient lighting for the touring and up. Tri zone climate control for the EX trim level and up, meaning both front driver, front passenger, and there's also an automatic climate control thing found on the roof in the rear seats there as well. So they can set their own temperature too. That's pretty cool there. Wireless phone charger is gonna come with the Elite trim level and up, and that's gonna be located just in between the front seats there. There is a cabin talk in-car PA system. That is pretty cool for the touring and Elite trim level, so you can yell at the rear passengers. But in addition to that, to know that you have to yell at them or not, there is a overhead sunglass holder with a rear conversation mirror, Honda calls it, but it's actually like a school bus mirror where you can actually spy on the rear passenger that is pretty cool that that's there as well. But overall, interior quality is actually really nice. I love whatever this design is just above the passenger side glove box that carries on to just above the engine start button there. That looks good. There's actually a three tier system on the doors here. So you have three different tiers of storage. That is pretty darn impressive as well. I think I've only seen that one other time in one other vehicle. So that was pretty cool. And I should also mention to you guys to actually insert a Blu-ray for that rear entertainment system. That's located up front here. So you could just insert the Blu-ray into the front. So one of the front passengers is going to have to insert that. But just below that, there is a ton of storage and there's also a little tray that pulls out for more of an organized storage system there as well. Just behind that, you have dual cup holders. I forgot to mention, there's also a 115 volt power outlet up front 
12 volt power outlet USB charging port, yet another USB charging port within the center armrest here, auxiliary port, and quite a bit of storage within that as well. And there's two more cup holders just behind that actually too. So quite a bit going on, really a very practical road trip vehicle. I'm gonna call it a road trip vehicle because the cargo space it really is just geared towards families, quite honestly. But now let's go ahead and take a look at the tech display, though. Eight inch color touchscreen display coming standard that comes with Bluetooth and audio streaming for all trim levels. Android Auto, Apple CarPlay coming with the EX trim leveling up. I really think Honda should put that on the LX. It's just my opinion, but you're going to have to go with the EX trim leveling up for that factory navigation system coming with the touring and elite and of course you can check out your radio information up there as well and by the way when it comes to the sound system you will find seven speakers 160 watts for the lx ex exl and touring trims then 11 speakers 550 watts for the elite trim level so i do believe you guys know what we have to do next let's go ahead and turn on the radio see what we got playing today and let's test out the clarity of this one That is a ridiculous amount of bass for a minivan to be quite honest but then again we do have the very best sound system in this particular odyssey that we have today that was pretty darn impressive for a minivan to be quite honest but last thing i wanted to mention to you guys on that tech display is when you do put the odyssey in reverse you of course will find a multi-angle rear view camera for all trim levels across the board letting you know who or what is behind you which is always is going to lead us into safety and so to start first thing i always like to mention iihs top safety pick honda odyssey did get that award so that's always a good start front side side curtain airbags come standard driver and passenger knee airbags as well in the back you're going to find latch aka lower anchors and tethers to children for the rear car seats rear child door locks back there as well tire pressure monitoring system that's all kind of boring safety features at this point actually but the real stuff kicks in when you get to Honda Sensing, which by the way, does come standard on every single trim level. This comes with collision mitigation braking system, road departure mitigation system, forward collision warning, lane departure warning as well. And that's part of Honda Sensing, but Honda didn't stop there. Also standard across the board for all trim levels, lane keep assist, adaptive cruise control, traffic sign recognition, and automatic high beams as well that is quite impressive and if you went with the ex trim level and up you're going to add to that a blind spot monitor with rear cross traffic alerts that's always a plus as well to make sure nobody's in your blind spot but overall when it comes to my final thoughts of the honda odyssey for my very first time reviewing a minivan at all kind of surprised me if you have a family i would say at least get out and check this one out because tons of cargo space like i said bigger than the 2020 suburban which kind of surprised me clever ideas in this thing as well including that honda cargo vacuum in the very back there a magic sliding second row as well you don't find that kind of stuff in suvs so thought that was pretty cool rear window sunshades are great but the third row window sunshades that's unheard of. That's unique to the Honda Odyssey. I haven't seen that on any other vehicle so far in my last 500 reviews that I've done. That's amazing. And of course, the Honda Odyssey is a legendary minivan at this point. It's been around for quite a while. And when it comes to my constructive criticism, because I always have a little bit at least, although the Odyssey does have a snow mode, I would have loved to have seen an option at least for an all-wheel drive system like the Honda Pilot has, for example. Especially if you live in a colder climate like Pennsylvania and you know it's going to snow every now and then all wheel drive at very minimum is some nice peace of mind for you. Also, multicolor ambient lighting would be very cool. I know Honda has blue for the Odyssey, that's cool, but multicolors to let you pick your own colors not only would it be cool for the kids, but it's pretty darn cool for the parents as well. Anyways, let me know what you guys think of the Honda Odyssey in the comments section below. I'm curious to hear what you guys think of this. That is about it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen there if you like. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews. That is what we do here on this channel after all. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.